Hello, everybody. Storm Chaser Vince Welty in the office today because we're looking at potential tropical trouble here in the Atlantic. It looks like maybe a tropical storm, maybe even hurricane status here could threaten parts of the southeast U.S. Nothing set in stone yet, but we're only a couple of days out and it's time to get pretty serious about this. Otherwise, we're going to be caught without guard. And trust me, you do not want to be caught off guard when it comes to tropical systems. We're going to start by taking a look at the GFS computer model. This is the American computer model. It is simply a simulation of the atmosphere, but we're getting close enough now to the potential tropical storm, maybe even hurricane, that I think we need to start paying attention to it. We're going to start here by looking at all of these low pressure systems and everything else that's affecting the country here. Uh, you can see that as we pull forward here at about 4 p.m. or so on Wednesday, it looks like we have some sort of a cyclone here off the southeast Florida coast. And as you can go ahead here and see, we pull this through, it shows that potential storm crossing the Florida Peninsula. Meanwhile, maybe some severe weather and some snow occurring up here in parts of the central and northern plains in the United States. It looks like a very active couple of days here. We'll take a look at that in just a minute in higher resolution. And then this system eventually pulling away and traveling up the east coast. Look at that before finally ejecting up there and getting into the Canadian Maritimes. All right, now that I have your attention, let's go ahead and look at our partner application here, Radar Omega, and look at those National Hurricane Center updates here. You can see we've got one area right here of potential tropical development. That is a high probability of development in the next couple of days, but that doesn't appear to be threatening the US coast. Where I wanna draw your attention is actually right here. This area right here, as indicated by the National Hurricane Center, has a high likelihood of development in the next couple of days. Now, I'm recording this here on Sunday afternoon, so things can change, especially if you're watching this Monday or Tuesday. Your tropical development chance in the next two days is 80%, 90% in the next five days, which is high. So what does that mean? Well, that means that we could see some sort of tropical storm, depression, maybe even hurricane, eventually form somewhere in this zone now right now a lot of the computer models have some sort of depression forming down here and then tracking up somewhere into the southeast florida coast there are some upper atmosphere characteristics that will likely keep this storm a little bit farther south uh, maybe south of that line there but again it's too early to be guaranteeing anything we don't even really have a developed system yet the computer models are picking up on that so let's go ahead and take a look at those right now so we can talk about the uncertainties and what we do know and come up with a plan from there once again, here's our friend, the GFS computer model. We've got lots of computer models we can look at, but right now I think for the scope of this video, we just should be looking at the one. I have analyzed some of these and they do show some pretty similar characteristics with of course that expected deviation that we would see. We're starting our computer model here from Sunday afternoon, moving it on and you can see right here in the center of the frame, we've got a 996 low forming and that looks like by about Monday at 7 p.m. We could have a depression, maybe even storm forming out here off the east coast of Florida. Of course, it is right there. And as we get this model ahead right here, we're looking at Monday afternoon and evening. This is between 7 and 8 p.m. Central or Eastern time, respectively. And you can actually see we've got a depression or a storm forming with a 996 Central Core there, uh, Florida being over here to its west. Things are starting to come together for what looks like a likely at least tropical storm. We'll go ahead and bring the GFS model through. Here we are Wednesday, very early morning around 3 a.m., now uh, approximately 6 to 9 a.m. And it looks like here near the Bahamas, we do have a 984 low. That is beginning to definitely become kind of concerning here. Looks like possibly tropical storm status at that point is certainly a possibility as it approaches Florida. Now I've gone and increased our map view at this point. So we're really honing in here on the Florida Peninsula. Again, this is approximately 6 a.m. or so roughly on Wednesday. And we go ahead and move that through. Could be affecting the Bahamas down here, the central core of that, or the 979 low, which is starting to get somewhat concerning here. We could possibly have a potential for hurricane status on this again it's as of sunday afternoon here it's way too early to make any promises we are simply analyzing this model keep in mind this is one potential scenario out of a huge barrel of many but i do believe that this is somewhat likely at this point so the time to pay attention is definitely now moving ahead through wednesday evening here you can see now we have a probably tropical storm here approaching eastern florida peninsula and this is thursday morning eventually crossing over the florida peninsula there it looks like we'll probably re-emerge into the gulf of mexico maybe somewhere between tampa and fort myers give or take a couple of uh 50 miles or so either direction that looks like it would be late thursday evening or maybe even overnight thursday i'm not paying a whole lot of attention to timing right now because we're a little ways away sometimes the timing can be 12 to 24 hours off either direction so right now it's pretty futile to say it's definitely going to hit here at x time because 
that would just simply make a lot of us liars here. So we're just trying to give a wide range of forecast times here. Looks like the GFS model does show this thing could once again retraverse part of Florida there, maybe even move back out. Kind of a similar path to Ian there. Once it eventually moved back out, it did uh, travel over north uh, the northern Florida peninsula there. But this is certainly not going to be another Hurricane Ian scenario. It doesn't look like uh, it's going to be too strong. It'll definitely have weakened significantly if it does follow this path and this intensity as it moves up there across the east coast and eventually becomes no longer our problem. Now there's a lot of folks out there that are going to be like, all right, this makes no sense. You're saying that this is a possibility, but it's likely, but it might not happen or it might. Folks understand that we really just kind of got this on the radar a couple of days ago. Uh, this is one of those homegrown tropical systems. We call them homegrown because they're not traversing the entire Atlantic. They're not coming off the west coast of Africa like a lot of storms are. They're coming from pretty close here. Sometimes these go a little bit undetected or under the radar sometimes until the last minute. And here we are at the last minute. We're Sunday afternoon here and we're talking about a potential tropical system sometime between Wednesday late through maybe early Friday. So I would say right now the best case scenario or the best thing to plan for if you live in the Florida Peninsula would probably be for a potential tropical storm, maybe weak hurricane impacts. That is a possibility. I would prepare for those sometime again, like I said, Wednesday evening through early Friday, give or take, allow some time for that to change. Give it 24 to 36 hours and we'll know a lot more folks. National Hurricane Center is going to be issuing advisories if something develops. And once we start getting some forecast advisories from the National Hurricane Center, it'll be much, much easier to advise, of course, you folks, the general public and the channel viewers, what the heck's actually going on. No need to panic right now. Again, do not panic. There is no fear mongering here, I'm trying to be open. I don't know exactly what's gonna happen, but what I do know, if this thing's at least a tropical storm, you can bet that we're gonna be down there providing live coverage. And speaking of live coverage, I wanna make a real quick mention about our partner application here, Radar Omega. You'll see me use Radar Omega all the time. In fact, it's on our live stream. And the really neat thing is you can actually see live coverage like we saw just a couple of days ago here in Texas. Uh, right here is actually a screen capture of the application viewed on desktop where you can see our cyclone port camera which is that system on the car that incorporates our live stream and weather data is capturing us here while we're looking at this rotating storm that briefly produced a tornado rain wrapped near athens texas so definitely a great place to watch us I'm not being paid to say this right now. This is not a paid promotion. This is simply me promoting something that's kind of becoming part of my brand here. And I really think you guys want to go ahead and check it out. Now, earlier I mentioned we might even have a potential for some severe weather later on this week, maybe simultaneous with this tropical system. So let's take a look and analyze that. You can see here Thursday early morning, we've got this potential tropical system here, maybe about to impact Florida. At the same time, you can see a low pressure here. 1,002 millibars, not super low, but maybe some snow back here across portions of the Western Rockies, maybe some precipitation up here. Some of that actually could be mixed or frozen across parts of South Dakota, Minnesota, even into Wisconsin. But it looks like here, as we pull the model forward just a little bit, we do have a strengthening surface low. And look at this, possibly some snow on the back side of it. That's that blue color there and that purple indicating maybe some mixed precipitation. Here we are with the zoom increased a little bit. Let's go ahead and move this model again through Thursday into parts of Friday. And look at this, maybe some snow here, that blue, and maybe some mixed precipitation, that purple there on the backside of the system, possibly a severe squall, and maybe even a couple of severe storms out ahead of it. Right now, it's way too early to determine the potential and strength of severe weather if it does happen, even the timing. But it's just something I want you to be mindful for. The Storm Prediction Center hasn't put out any severe weather risks for this area yet. If they do, of course, I'll update you on Twitter, Facebook, and the YouTube community page. But for right now, I just want to be monitoring here across the northern plains into the upper Midwest that we may have the potential for some stormy weather at the same time that this possible tropical system's impacting the southeast U.S. So that's all I have, folks. I hope I didn't panic anybody that's on the West Florida coast that's been devastated by Hurricane Ian just a little over a month ago. But this is certainly not another Hurricane Ian scenario whatsoever. I'm really, really not trying to send that message here. We're not looking at a Category 4 catastrophic, insane storm coming into Fort Myers Beach scenario. Not that kind of storm. But we need to keep an eye on those impacts, coastal flooding, strong winds, maybe some tornadoes as we sometimes see with these tropical systems. Category one hurricane, tropical storm, maybe depression. I'm not 100% sure yet, but my money right now is betting on possibly a strong tropical storm. Wouldn't be surprised if we hit hurricane status, but again, I'm not calling any shots just yet. Give me about 24 to 36 hours and I'll give you my actual opinion here. 
But right now we're just in the monitoring stage, just trying to raise awareness. So again, if you live in the Florida Peninsula, just be mindful and you might want to make some plans here just in case something does happen. Thanks again for following along. If you've made it this far, be sure to subscribe, hit the little thumbs up button if you like the video. If you don't, then don't hit it. Thank you again to our YouTube supporters, our channel members, and everything for making these videos possible. I will be back with a live stream here in the next couple of hours to a couple of days.